Yo, what is going on, you mismatched Murkrow? Zacian is still insanely strong in Sword and Shield on, and there's a ton of ways to play it. Some of them include Zamazenta, some of them have Inteleon, some of them have uh, Articuno V, uh, tons of cool ways to play Zacian. Um, and today's build is going to include the Ludicolo, uh, and it's just going to try and hit really, really hard. Um, but we don't have to hit really, really fast, actually, to be honest. So let's take a look at the list, and let's go over uh, what makes this deck work. So, of course, Forization, our main attacker with the Brave Blade. Um, and then alongside it, which we have more of those cards in the deck, actually, but it's not our main attacker, is we have a 4-2-4 Ludicolo line. And we use it for that enthusiastic dance ability, which says when we evolve Ludicolo, uh, on that turn we evolve it, our basic will want to do 100 more damage. So that means Brave Blade will be hitting for 230 damage, which is a lot of damage and KOs almost all V maxes that are relevant in the format. You KO the Urshifu, you KO the the Shadow Rider, you already KO an Ice Rider because it's weak to to metal. You KO Leafeon, like you KO pretty much all the relevant. The only one you don't KO is Eternatus, but I haven't been seeing that at all lately on the ladder. Maybe it's just kind of taking a break and we'll be back eventually, but we don't have to worry about it right now. Uh, but yeah, we're KOing a ton of V maxes with that combo, and sometimes we don't even need the Ludicolo. Sometimes just Brave Blade with Station is enough to win games, of course. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the engine. So we got the 424 Ludicolo, of course, and we got two Orangu in here. Primate Wisdom, really good to combo with the Intrepid Sword. It helps us save combo pieces before we research our Marnie from the Ludicolo, like the Rare Candy or the Ludicolo itself. And also, I've been trying it out, or haven't quite tried it out yet, but I've added in these Rotom Phones because they combo so well with Primate Wisdom. And they can combo really well with Intrepid Sword, put a Metal on top and the Intrepid Sword into it. You can put the Lombri on top of your deck before you end your turn, potentially, and then top entry into that. So the phones have a ton of potential to be really good. I haven't tried them quite yet in the build, um, but they just seem like they would work really well. So I've switched around a couple of the counts in the deck, and I've cut back on the Great Balls a little bit. Um, because the phones can kind of find anything. So yeah, Rotom Phone seems really good. Will it be really good? I guess we're going to find out together in these games. But yeah, that's the idea behind the deck. And uh, not too much to say unless I've got the four research, two Marnie, three boss, of course. Uh, a couple switch. We don't need to switch too often. Usually our opponent is knocking out our station. Or if they don't, we might just be content using Intrepid Sword for the turn anyways. And we don't need to attack with back-to-back -back Brave Blades every single turn. Uh, two Air Balloons help us pivot. Um, set up something to then Metal Saucer to a fresh station, potentially. Uh, 11 Metal Energy. Uh, and then one Raihan in here to help us with a little bit of extra energy excel. I think I've only used the Raihan once. I had two in here initially. Uh, and a lot of people have been playing this deck with the Altaria line. I don't have that in here. I haven't tried it yet. But the deck's been working fine without it. So I'm not feeling inclined to have to try it out quite yet. I don't feel like the deck has hit a brick wall where I can't keep building on the deck without having to include the Altaria. So I haven't included the Altaria yet, quite yet, but it would help us find boss and Raihan, which could be very good. Um, but I'm, I like the idea. I really like Rotom Phone. <laughs> I really, really like Rotom Phone. So that's kind of what I'm going with right now. It's just Rotom Phones. Always been a huge fan of the card. Never been a ton of decks to make it, uh, it work with, but this one should work pretty well. I guess I don't know for sure yet because I haven't played any games with the phones. So let's go ahead and let's play some games with Ludicolo, Station, Rotom Phone, the deck. All right, we're getting into it. Let's see if we can't get a dub. Opening hand, got a couple things going on. We got that out to the Zacian. We don't have a draw supporter, which is not great, of course, because we don't really want to use Crobat aggressively. Um, we might have to. We might have to, um, which isn't the worst thing ever, but we don't want to. But it looks like we're going to have to. Let's see what we top deck. Another Metal Energy. And we got this Red Candy in hand. I think I'm going to give it the Red Candy, actually. We do play four of them. They're not that important to... Uh, keep around uh i feel like i can definitely give up some rare candies throughout games um go ahead and grab this i will go ahead even air balloon i mean i'm kind of okay with having a low tad in the active but not if it's my only low tad so i think i'll air balloon the low tad i might switch to a low tad or retreat this low tad to another low tad depending on what we draw here <coughs> excuse me uh great ball first go ahead and grab the guru um i don't know if there's anything worth we're going to go ahead and Marnie here next. And then go from there. Yeah, go ahead and play the Marnie. I put it into a whole ton on that first turn, so maybe I shouldn't have played the Marnie there, to be honest. But it didn't feel terrible. Uh, we got the low tad, the other low tad that I was talking about. And we can actually primate with some energy on top <clears throat> to that Intrepid Sword. Get another one. Um, the question is, should I retreat to... I think I should retreat to the other low tad here and then Intrepid Sword. And yeah, we're guaranteed that energy. Set it up on top <coughs> with... The, <clears throat> excuse me, with the Orangaroo. So we're all good to go here. Let's see what my opponent's got. And, uh, I mean, let's see what they can do. Uh, here comes the tag call. So they are playing the tag call build of, it looks like Dark Box. So, I mean, they don't have Sneasel or Type Null in play. But a lot of people haven't been running the Type Null uh, as of late from what I've seen. So, can't get out of Weavile's turn. Can't red and blue. 
They can go with that Sabrina and Bryson, and they actually can knock out my active here just with a good old Dark Pulse. Um, they discarded the Sabrina and Bryson, though, so I guess that's not happening. <laughs> I don't think that's happening, uh, which is fine. And there's the Sneasel. Uh, but yeah, we can get the knockout this next turn. We can go get Rare Candy off of Raihan. Um, so we can make, uh, we can knock out this, this Zoro Ninja here. And I think we're just going to go for it. I don't see a reason not to go for it. Oops. I sent up the wrong, all right, I dropped like the switch, <clears throat> but I would want to use the switch later. Uh, so I was supposed to <laughs> send up Crobat and hard to treat it. So that I can get an energy in the discard pile to use with the Raihan. So I messed that up pretty badly. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I messed that up go with the Lombre here. Um, so I have to switch hard to treat Raihan. But I want something to Raihan too, and I also need to get the right candy. So let's start with the phone. Put the Zation on top. Okay, and I can uh, Primate Wisdom the Lombre, Lombre to get the Zation, and then go switch, attach, bench, retreat, Raihan, accelerate the energy of the bench Zation. Get the right candy, but I should have a switch in my hand here. I was supposed to send up the Crobat. I just like defaulted there. I was like, oh, well, we're gonna uh, send up uh, this thing here. It has free retreat. Um, so sometimes it's good to be uh, <clears throat> playing like a bot. Sometimes it's bad. And this is one of those times where it's bad to be playing like a bot because we messed up. Because <laughs> we could have a switch in here. We go switch boss next turn and like knock something else out. Um, using Intrepid Sword this next turn will also probably be fine, to be honest. I'm, I'm down to just go ahead and Intrepid Sword for the turn. That also seems more than fine. So, not too uh, concerned with that, to be honest. That seems fine for the turn, especially because my opponent... I mean, they even if they had the red and blue, I don't think they can knock on my active. So, I don't think my active is getting knocked out here. I think we're going to be fine on that. They could probably set up a decent amount of energy, get like 1, 2, 3, 4 energy. They actually get to 5, 6 on the following turn, which is actually kind of scary. Because that's when that Dark Moon... GX comes into play. So we can go like switch boss KO something off the bench. Would have been pretty good, to be honest. That would have been pretty good. Uh, I <laughs> can't do it because I used my switch, but would have been a nice option. We got a low tad here, then we can attach, and then we can Intrepid Sword, and we can look for just like Candization KO Mewtwo on the following turn. That sounds pretty good to me as well. So I wouldn't mind uh, getting that play going. The question is, what do I want to do on my next turn? I think I'm going to Primate Wisdom the Ludicolo and then try and find a we're trying to find a draw support i mean we'll see what we top deck as well but i think ludicolo is the card i would want to save maybe not maybe the boss is what i want to save uh but hitting switch here and just hitting this would be nice getting a switch and hitting that would be nice okay i definitely want to probably wasn't ludicolo just in case we get a research here <laughs> third ludicolo who would have guessed uh, Intrepid Sword, no energy. Couple phones to work with, though, so the phones will hopefully be able to combo with the Primate Wisdom and get us something decent here. Uh, Triple Ludicolo in the hand, of course, is not doesn't look great. It's not the worst thing ever, <laughs> but it's not that great for sure. Um, but yeah, Triple Ludicolo um, is definitely uh, not... like We would like a little bit more variety in in the cards <laughs> we would like a little bit more variety in the cards for sure uh the question is do they get the dark moon off they don't have the dark round brian yet if it was in the hand it was in the hand so they can use good old dark moon and then we can't play any trainer cards which is gonna get a little bit scary i'm not gonna lie no trainer cards next turn not looking good for us um can still win but the game is gonna get um Really messy from here, I feel like. Uh, we'll see. Maybe they don't go with the Dark Moon. Actually, they're retreating to the Crobat. So it looks like Dark Moon, not what they're planning to do. Uh, and just knock out my Zation. Now that... Now what do I want to do? I have no idea what I would I mean, I'd love to win the game this turn. And it's definitely possible if we top deck, like, Energy or something like that. Uh, we top deck Metal Saucer. So if this finds Rare Candy... Let's see. No Rare Candy. We can grab uh i don't know, put the zation on top because i think i'd want to just like split energy on zations but that doesn't sound like good either uh rotom phone again can we find our candy no rare candy we could put the research on top and that would give us a lot of draw power hopefully find a decent amount of cards we could put zation on top and grab that and then just go for the knockout maybe they can't get oh if we knock out weavile oh no they've sneezed play. if we ask to say if we knock out weavile um, they can't actually get to the Dark Moon. But I don't think I can stop them from getting to Dark Moon at this point. Um, but if I can get into a Lombri... Okay, so let's go with the Research. I have to set up another Zation as well. Sheesh. This is not looking good. I don't like... I don't like this. 
It's not looking great. <laughs> I don't think we're in a good spot here at all. Maybe they won't see the play. I guess that's like possible. The primate wisdom wanted a little colo back. We're gonna get the research. Um, I'm gonna play the metal saucer here. Let me go research. Draw some cards. Candy. There's the candy play, but we can't do it. Maybe they just don't have boss. Can I just like play like they don't have boss here? Um, maybe we can play like they don't have boss. I'm gonna make this thing a pivot, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and trap its sword. Grab some stuff. Like, if I KO the active here, I just get Dark Mooned. Yeah, maybe they just don't have boss now, but it's not looking good. It's not looking good in this one. Probably I'm taking an L uh, in this first game. And the Dark Moon going to be a little bit too much for us to handle on this next turn. As long as they Dark Moon our Zacian. I guess if they just KO this Ludicolo, I don't really care, to be honest. <laughs> they could KO that Ludicolo all they want. Uh, and then we have Ludicolo plus Zacian on the next turn to win the game. But here comes the Mewtwo, and I have a feeling... And they're, no, they're not down any boss. I have a feeling they probably have access to a boss in the hand. Uh, so we'll probably be losing this one. We'll see. We'll make sure they got it. And maybe they just go with the Dark Moon KO the active. Uh, just to try and make it so I can't play trainer cards. They don't have the boss. Um, but a lot of energy being moved to the active. But it could just be a Dark Moon on the active. And if they just Dark Moon the active, we can definitely still win this one. Uh, because we can, we have a Ludicolo in hand, and that's not a trainer card, so we can just play that down. We, the, yeah, the Dark Moon. Uh, but there's the boss, and then here comes the Dark Moon. Maybe a misclick. Maybe that's what we're hoping for here to get this dub here. No, there's the Dark Moon. All right. So I don't think we have a win condition at this point. I'm trying to think. Because um, Zoro Ninja, um, they can get energy with the Moltres. So they'll always be doing enough damage with this thing to KO anything. All right. Going to go ahead and concede this one. Take an L on this first one. But, uh, I mean, tag teams are a little bit fast, a little bit tough. Uh, let's, hit, let's hit a VMAX deck. Let's hit a VMAX deck. All right, here we go again. I'm hoping we play against a VMAX deck this time around because that is really what the... I mean, is a post-rotation list, right? And that's like the power of this list that is trying to abuse tag teams. A little bit harder to deal with, I think, for sure. Um, not as big a fan of playing up against those tag teams, but definitely like to play against um, VMAXs. VMAXs are what we're trying to play against. Rangaroo start for my opponent. What else do they got here is the question comes to primate wisdom Rangaroo not played in too many decks right now so i almost feel like we're maybe into a mirror match here Ooh, bunch of good cards in the hand oh man all right definitely want to save the metal saucer i think the metal saucer is going to be too important to lose here and because i am feeling like this is probably a mirror match um I'm seeing if there's like some way I could use this. Well, I think I'm gonna go primate wisdom. I don't want to draw into the metal saucer, so I'm gonna primate wisdom it. Hey, another rangaroo. <laughs> um. Uh. Well, sheesh. I don't really want to lose a second rangaroo, but he's not that important. So. Get rid of him, I guess. Uh, grab a second Zation because if we are up against a mirror match here, I kind of just want Zations really aggressively. To be honest, and what do we want on top here? Probably some energy for turn. Guaranteeing the research for next turn does sound pretty good as well. And we're pretty likely to draw an energy off of this research. So I think just guaranteeing the research for next turn. Ooh, no energy for turn though. Now I did get this Rotom phone, so I could definitely set one up on top. Uh, hopefully at least one. That kind of stinks to not hit an energy for turn. But we got two off the Intrepid Sword. So that will like, that evens it out, I think. <laughs> we don't really need uh, to attach for turn when we Intrepid Sword for two. That kind of makes up for it. So Rotom Phone, guaranteeing one. The second one happened to be there. So that was super nice. And we're kind of on pace for uh, where, where we want to be. Marnie coming in from our opponent. Um, the big thing here is we want to have the potential to boss Brave Blade in the same turn. If it is Mirror Match, I'm, I'm constantly, I'm kind of playing and talking like it is Mirror Match. Uh, we did put a low tad in play because if it's not, we definitely want the low tad in play. But likely to be Mirror Match, like I said. And there we go. There's a station for my opponent. But they could also be playing Capes. And if they are playing capes, we do need extra damage to KO them. I don't play Tool Scrapper or any other damage mod uh, modifier. So we probably do want still still to have a low tad in play just in case uh, our opponent is playing that. So I'm going to go ahead and primate with some of the Metal Saucer, which is the most important card in this hand. Draw to a boss, which is good. Um, go ahead and try to start with this one. Got another energy. So now we got that boss play, which is super big in the Zacian Mirror matches. You don't just want to knock something out. You want to knock out... Like, if I just KO this Orangaroo, I go to odd prize cards. So then I have to go, like, chase another one prizer to ever get to even up the prize cards again. Uh, even if I attacked a Zacian in the active that was worth two prize cards, then I'd be KOing something once again that is doesn't have any energy on it. So I'm not really setting my opponent behind because that's really, like, the, the big breaking point in the mirror match is just keeping people's energy out of play more so than anything. 
Um, so that's what we want to do is we want to KO our opponent's energy and kind of, you know, make it so they can't attack back to back or whatever. They're got two energy on this one. I'm kind of scared. Do they have boss switch? Well, here comes a pokey gear. So they're playing this aggressively, which means they don't have the boss play in hand. That doesn't get them a boss. So that's super good. Um, but yeah, so now we're gonna be able to go boss KO this station, take two energy out of play. My opponent probably should have split their energy here, gone one and one. And let's say no, they're guaranteed a, a primate wisdom. Control. Oh, but they can attach here. So I guess that makes sense for them to go like that. And now they might actually have two and two here if this hits an energy. No energy hit though. So they might whiff the attack next turn. And we got an energy off the top deck, which is huge because that's actually, uh, to be honest, really what we're looking for here. Throw this down here. Uh, boss up this station, gonna take two energy out of play. And I'm gonna primate wisdom this metal saucer because if they do Marnie us, uh, and the KO myization, I just need more energy in play. Uh, and it's not too difficult to attack. Attach for turn, on the turn. Uh, but the thing we're trying to set up is, you know, being able to Brave Blade their Zation. So, um, like, we got this energy here. Now, if they Marnius, we won't have this energy to attach for turn. But it's more likely we draw into an attachment than a Metal Saucer XL. So, preserve the Metal Saucer in case we get Marnied. Want that there. And yeah, we're just kind of on this station chasing. Yeah, like I said, still want some kind of low tad in play just in case of capes because capes. And there's that Marnie. Now we're going to draw into that metal saucer. That was the most important card for us to try and preserve out of the hand to try and draw into. Now, if they get, do get down a cape, we're going to have to go find that candy. Uh, what's it called? But a double saucer in this hand is pretty sick. Uh, this is a pretty sick hand right here to use as a follow up. Here comes an intrepid sword from my opponent. Don't have a whole ton to work with. Uh, if we top deck boss or switch, just got an energy. So how do I want to handle this guy? I could just prime it with some this and then intrepid sword with this one. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and just hold the metal saucers. because uh, then they have to Marnie me again to get rid of them. Um, but yeah, now I just have three energy, three energy. This one's ready to go. I just need to set up one more Zation, and that should be all we need to win the game as well. And now we got this Lombre to set up as well, which is gonna be a big deal to help us get easier get more easily get into that Ludicolo. Um, so this station is probably going down. I could have harder treated this station to be honest, but then that opens up an opportunity for my opponent to go like switch boss KO this one. And then I, they basically five energy was removed from play. Um, and I do give them the two prize cards, but it means that I'll have three energy in play instead of potentially one. So if I had harder treated this station, my opponent could have gone switch boss KO this station. And then I'd only have those, those three energy in play or four energy in, or no, I have one energy in play as opposed to three energy in play, which is basically the name of the game in the mid-game in the station. Mirror is just try and have the more energy in play to a certain point. So we're going to start with the Rotom Phone, try and find another station. Got this Quick Ball. That's going to be big. And then we can Primate Wisdom. The uh, probably Quick Ball, the... I think I'm going to Quick Ball the Ludicolo. Um, so I'm going to save the energy because energy attachment still... I still want to get an energy attachment off this turn. We'll Quick Ball the Ludicolo because we don't really need it um or we probably won't need it and we have two more so i'm not like worried about running out of ludicolo <laughs> i don't think that's a big deal at all um we will we'll only potentially need one so we're not gonna run out of ludicolo anytime soon and i'm gonna play the morning as well because i would like to get an energy attachment for turn with the energy attachment for turn so that's a little bit scary uh we're gonna get two prize cards this turn and we only need one more energy to close out this game so not the scariest thing but uh i mean it we could whiff i guess i would have really loved an energy there just kind of solidify my energy in play not have to worry about it. But I definitely want to get the Lombri down as well because I could have quick balled the Lombri and then Primate Wisdom to the Ludicolo and kept that energy in hand. But I, just in case of capes, like capes are very popular in Zacian decks. My opponent hasn't seen one yet, but that doesn't mean they don't play them. So I really wanted to, you know, make sure I have outs to the Ludicolo just so I can play around the cape as well because energy is a pretty easy thing to find, to be honest. I'm not too worried about finding energy. So not that big of a deal, I don't think. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll see here. They don't have a, they only have one energy on Zacian. They still have a ton of metal saucers. Raihan is also something they could be playing to help them set up. Um, and there's that cape. I was talking about it. I was like, all right, we got to prep for this cape as much as possible. And we do have double candy Ludicolo. But if they Marnie us here, going to be a lot easier to find a Ludicolo than candy plus um, Ludicolo. Um, <clears throat> yeah, candy plus Ludicolo. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. They got the cape. We have Ludicolo in hand. We don't have the energy, but we do have a research, so it shouldn't be too hard to find an energy, to be honest. That should be pretty manageable. Uh, oh, I didn't even... We have two Metal Saucer left. We've been super efficient with Intrepid Swords and hitting energy turn to turn after that, or from early on. Uh, but there's that Raihan, so they get the energy here, and I'm sure this will either find the Switch card or find some kind of follow-up for my opponent if they have the Switch card in hand. But if I had to guess, this would be getting an Air Balloon, probably, to move this Orangaroo. And then on our turn, can we find an energy? <laughs> or a Metal Saucer. We do have a Pivot already set up in this low tad. Here comes the Brave Blade. So it should be, we should be able to win here. It shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, let's even check. We have five energy left, two metal saucers, and our Crobat, I believe, 
and Crobat left. So potential for more draw power besides the research as well. Do we get and there we go top deck metal saucer ludicolo comes down yes i would like to do 100 more damage thank you ludicolo and then brave blade for 230 damage and we get a dub in the mirror match not mirror is the zation mirror so many ways to play zation right now um and ludicolo comes out on top in this one all right here we go again hopefully playing up against a vmax deck we did go first which is great in the opening hand wow really good um i probably i might open the guru actually to be honest um i could have opened the low tad but I, if they could do 60 damage turn one i don't want to lose my low tad we're up against uh this thing you know what it is um play a great ball get out a little colo so i uh so it's jump bluff all right so maybe no v maxes today in the video unfortunately so i think um I'm just gonna go like this and then use Intrepid Sword. I'm like trying to like, what am I trying to do here? Uh, yeah, we're not trying to use Little Cola. We're just trying to set up a bunch of Zations. Just trying to set up a bunch of Zations and go hit, 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 hit. Stagger them a little bit if we can, because Jump Puff is annoying uh, and does spread damage. So if we have a lot of things on our bench, just more things they can hit, more things they can kind of take advantage of to draw their prize cards faster. <clears throat> Don't really want to give our opponent that uh, that option. Excuse me. Yeah, so we don't want to bench a bunch of stuff. We're going to try and stagger our stations. Um, yeah, so they can't take advantage of that. Don't want to bench any low tads. They only have 60 HP, so 30, 30. That knocks them out. We see, even see our opponent is playing Echoing Horn. So I don't know how many they play, but <clears throat> when this low tad hits the discard pile next turn because of the research, possible they could take advantage of that. Here comes a quick ball for my opponent. So they will be able to get two hop ups in play. Um, but that's one of the things I can kind of come up with this deck is it can just be kind of slow, to be honest. Um it can just be kind of slow uh for sure for sure can just be kind of slow um which might be uh yeah, we might, might be our early advantage here we'll see how much they can actually put together this turn they have at least one hop if i assume this will have to get a hop if i guess they could just retreat um and just like you know, hope i don't have like boss care with their only hop in play which is a pretty fair bet that i won't have that i'm gonna need, like switch card another energy and a boss eight card hand not super likely they do grab a second hop up here and i'm sure they'll retreat to it anyways because why leave the one with the energy and the active that doesn't make a whole ton of sense of course um so yeah double hop up set up oh another quick ball so they're gonna get some more stuff set up here actually uh we'll see what else they got they got the remoraid hop ups gonna go with the crobat so they're looking to actually draw cards as well crobat in play for us is super good because that makes it a little bit easier for us to take uh our prize cards <laughs> uh, otherwise we'd maybe have to go through six hot or six jump bluffs slash hop up slash one prize pokemon which is definitely harder than going through uh, a crobat plus some of the others the other stuff so this is definitely what we like to see uh, and another thing about this the jump love deck is you kind of need they need the v pokemon to be on the bench to actually do the extra damage so as long as our jason is in the active they're not going to be doing a whole ton of damage and actually they're giving us the crobat so we don't even have to work for these two prize cards here um gonna save the metal saucer bring it easier to set up stations throughout the game we got a quick ball don't really want the metal saucer on top i'm not look, really looking to draw into that but what else do i actually even want this turn? i might just grab a low tad and thin it out like i said i don't want to put another station in play because it makes it easier for my opponent to kind of get their prize cards uh didn't see a switch card here that kind of stinks but not nothing we can do about it so i think i'm just gonna go attach intrepid um yeah just see some more cards not gonna attach the energy if we hit it uh no switch card yet but we do have phone plus primate wisdom next turn which would hopefully draw us into a switch card of some sort so we can attack next turn. we would love to attack this turn and kept the attacks flowing from there so not drawn into that of course kind of stinks but not a whole ton we can do about it and here comes the jump bluff here we go jump bluff is online uh <laughs> with the fluffy barrage uh so they can attack twice during their turn so they can do 60 60 so they could kill my orangaroo this turn which i would actually be fine with to be honest uh but the play they try and set up is they try and use the tool card the rapid strike tool card that says they can do 30 damage to all of their opponent all of the opponent's pokemon that's the second Pasimian. that's gonna clog up their bench a lot <laughs> especially if i don't ko this crobat now maybe i could try and do something around that i don't really want to ko crobat now to be honest um and kind of force them to always only have one bench space to work with for the rest of the game of course they can make it work with the the, the way jump bluff works because when you attach the energy so you can like have a hop up and play then evolve it to a skip loom then attach to the skip loom and then go find the jump bluff um but i think we can definitely take advantage of this i think my opponent definitely 
uh messed up a little bit here by putting that Passimian down I mean they put it down because they're like they always want a Passimian in place so they don't want me to just focus a Passimian and if I focus the Passimian they lose out on a lot of damage um on the bench so they don't want me to be able to take advantage of that for sure is the reason they put the second Passimian down but should they maybe just like discarded it and then ordinary rotted it back when they find an ordinary rod if I do focus the other Passimian that makes a little bit more sense to me personally but um I mean we'll see if it works out for them I feel like we're gonna definitely be able to take advantage of this though for sure I think we're definitely gonna be able to take advantage of this the fact that they put this uh second Passimian in play yeah we can go knock out a jump luff this turn and then just really start to limit my opponent there's a ramorate search off the artillery <clears throat> yeah I really don't want to kill the crowbat like I said it sucks to say no you just like top deck it it's like oh but you gotta say no here you gotta say no I don't want to say no trust me if I if I uh if it made sense to say yes I would but man that really stinks <laughs> that feels so bad <laughs> to say no there gonna grab this loop all the way this gonna grab Zation because we do want to set up one of those another one of these eventually and then Rotom phone there's that switch I would have loved an air balloon but we'll go with the switch or was a metal saucer for later and then switch and then yeah boss up one of these the question is which one right so this one has the tool card <clears throat> but I'm not as afraid of the tool card as I am just of jump bluff in general I think so I'm gonna go after this one instead I think this is more of a like they possibly can't get out of jump bluff next turn. maybe they prize two or something but the, if I only have this guru on my bench I don't know if I care about the uh scroll of swirls I don't know if I care uh and I purposely didn't put down the station last turn attached to it I didn't want to bench it attached to it you know even if I killed the one with the scroll they play four of them they could just artillery for another one for this jump bluff um and then they would be doing 120 to my bench station which we're trying to avoid here we're trying to be like okay I have one station in play it's got grass resistance we are resistant to grass and it's in the active right so that means resistance and weakness apply when they attack even if it's with the scroll so they can do 60 here and 60 here oh no they would do zero to the station because this is only for bench pokemon so currently they can do 60 to my station <clears throat> with spinning attack um or they can do 60 to my orangaroo and that's it 60 damage that's all they can do um so this gives us a ton of time to just kind of sit here and chill um build up our hand to get the second station in play and uh yeah we're just not under too much pressure at all i would love to uh, yeah they're gonna do zero damage to my i don't think they realize they're doing zero damage to my station until maybe right now and then yeah matchless maelstrom zero zero 60 to my bench guru um primate wisdom one of the metal saucers uh and then strip sword and we'll, we're just not gonna attack for a turn because our station took zero damage and if our station is taking zero damage we don't really care <laughs> we don't really care what else is going on in the game we're like okay that's fine it's like we'll attack next turn right and we'll knock out this jump bluff um and this is the i think this game is a really good example of how you want to get creative when you guys play against different matchups you want to stop and just ask yourself what does your opponent's deck do uh, and then ask yourself what does your deck do and just think about how the decks match up against each other and what is going on in the matchup and how you can best abuse what is happening to your advantage and that's what we're doing right here we're not benching pokemon we are we're leaving this zation by itself in the active knowing that their attacks are very limited my opponent probably should have used spinning attack next turn i don't think they realized they were going to be doing zero damage uh but even then that's only 60 damage to a zation right that is not a whole ton of damage uh here we see the skip loom uh search fail now, i do have to be careful that i don't get a little bit too uh confident in this zation and then they wipe my board in one turn but i don't think it's going to happen for a while i think we're pretty safe here uh their best play would be to get the Rangaroo in the active and then spread to the station while it's on the bench uh but then they would ko the orangaroo that's the problem then then orangaroo gets ko'd and i know exactly how much damage they can do turn to turn matchless maelstrom it looks like they want to take out my guru here but once again i don't think that's going to be that big of a deal for me um i'm just gonna brave blade and then they can do 60 and then i'll drop a sword pass and then i'm gonna brave blade um and they're just gonna kind of run out of jump plus <laughs> again another lombre top why are we using why are we getting all of them in this match where we don't want them on the bench uh no I don't want to put it on my back. I would love to. I would love to. Um, yeah, Brave Blade, take the knockout. Uh, maybe there's something in their deck that I don't know about that I'm going to get bopped with next turn. And maybe I'll just lose the game next turn. But from my knowledge of the Jump Bluff deck, I think the maximum amount of damage my opponent can do next turn is 60 damage. But we'll see. Maybe there's something in there that I'm not thinking of uh, that they're going to be able to abuse that will make things a little bit awkward. It looks like they're setting up for a Fling, but Fling is actually only doing 20 damage because... This only apply, applies to the benched Pokemon. So we're going to draw. We're going to Intrepid Sword. 
that is triple metal energy i'll take one i'll take one extra energy onto this station maybe to harder treat it maybe i should have taken two there to be honest um can do like a harder treat play at some point uh, but yeah we are completely content with just chilling and hanging out and my opponent is com almost completely out of jump plus stuff and there is the concede yeah this game is a perfect example of uh when you guys go up against something you're not sure how the matchup breaks down or what to do in it just kind of take your time ask yourself what does my opponent's deck do what does my deck do how can i best you know take advantage of what they're trying to do uh, or what i'm trying to do how do they interact with each other and you saw right there limited our bench we're like well if we just don't bench another station even though we can't attack turn after turn after turn if we just have solozation in the active they're very limited on how much damage they can do a turn and yeah we completely shut them out of the game very easily in that one and uh yeah that's gonna do it if you guys enjoyed the video give it a like if you're new here and you're enjoying the content be sure to subscribe and hit the bell and i'll see you tomorrow or yeah let's see you tomorrow